Gentlemen, hey Alfred, uh, Mo, Adam, um, welcome back to our latest uh, podcast. Um, I, I want to start today um, by referencing a, a question that I asked a very young producer at the radio station this morning. And I asked her, right, um, what is the one thing you would like to change about your life? In fact, no, what is the one thing that concerns you most, most about your money situation um, at this point in time? And she is... Um, I think maybe she's 26, 27, okay, lives at home, but as with everybody else, continues to juggle financial issues in, in her head. She said to me, um, I, wish my, I wish I was paid more. Uh, I wish my wages were higher. I wish uh, I could have more increases in my salary. Then I asked her, how much are you being paid now? I should, in fact, I shouldn't, I shouldn't tell you how much she's being paid. But suffice to say, it's not a lot, okay? So the issue is wages. And why wages are not enough and they're not rising fast enough to deal with, um, you know, the cost of living and, and what have you. I want to ask you guys, what do you think about this whole spectre of wages and what is your approach to basically salaries in this world? Um, well, Chok, for me personally, um, I've, I've had a, a fortunate uh, upbringing where, you know, from young I was taught um, from my dad, I think in the earlier episodes we were talking about how it's on this entrepreneurial spirit. It's always been in green in me, and we, we as you know, me and my siblings, we were always taught not to depend on these wages, not to depend on salary. If we were to be able to depend on that, then you're depending on someone else and not yourself. Um, following up to that as well, my 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 dad has always uh, imparted this knowledge whereby um, if you're going to be working for someone. Um, don't work to earn, but rather work to learn. Uh, learn the necessary skills um, along the journey because at the end of the day, um, you're not just doing a job, but you're building a career. So one of the things that we could probably think about is, you know, at that point in time, um, if you're in a position where if it, yeah, you're getting not so much, but what is it that exactly that you're taking away from it? Um, you could probably learn on how to live with not so much. Um, and you know, uh, by doing that, you know, you could probably make some behavioral changes along the way, um, because there's this there's this concept of, I think there was a study done uh, in America, you know, where, where this group of professors asked guys who were making fifty thousand dollars a year, um, and asked them, said, oh, okay, what what kind of salary are you um, are you are you going to be happy with? Uh, the fifty thousand dollar guy says a hundred thousand, and then I'll be happy. And they ask the same set of group the guys who are in their same age group, same demographics, uh, who are making hundred thousand, and then those guys say, oh, "I'll be happy with two hundred thousand." So it's a never-ending cycle. And uh, in terms of uh, what, uh, in terms of behavioral science, this is what we call the hedonic adaptation, right? We, once once we start, we are used to something already, we tend to be able to oh, we want a lot more. You know, this doesn't really excite me anymore. And I think that's the fundamental reason why we always think that we're never, we're never going to get paid enough. I'm not going to discredit the fact that um, there are some social and uh, you know structural issues in terms of uh, minimum wage here and stuff like that. But there's nothing you can do uh, rallying down the streets and protesting for a minimum wage policy and getting the government to introduce that. That's that's way beyond what you could probably do. But you know, in the interest of, of our own topic, we have to be able to take charge, right? So you can do more. <laughs> well, well, thank you for... <laughs> as, as, as the startup founders, I guess, uh, what we've also realized probably in the past six months uh, is that we can't rely on our salaries or our wages for us to live, right? We have to focus on the business. There's so much that needs to go into it. So, um, you know, it's interesting because you said that uh, she, she said, you know, I wish I got paid more, right? And, and it's the same for a lot of other people. It's like, what, what would you want to do, right? You're afraid of your finances and you want to, they always say they want to take up a second job. While that's all well and good, um, you're exchanging essentially your time, extra time to bring in more money. Um, but then again, like you want to take charge, you're not actually, you know, focusing on the core issue, which is management and self-management of your money, right? Uh, so for us, like, we don't take too much, we don't want to take more time uh, when we can use all that time to focus on the business, right? So we've got to make your money start working for you, I guess. Yeah. Um, 
I, I, I take on board what you both said, and, and I think that's a recurrent theme now that we've done this a few times. And, it, you know, you're, you're quite consistent in, in both of you in saying that um, we've got to be able to learn to manage with less. Um, what we have in terms of, of, of financial knowledge is not so much what we don't know. We, we know we've got to spend less and save more. We know that intrinsically. But it's more of a behavioral change, which is what a lot of people don't, don't like, that behavioral discipline. And in financial markets, you can see that. We know we shouldn't speculate on the share market. We know. We still do it. We know that Bitcoin is bloody high at 62,000. We, we, we still buy it. We know that the iPhone is a little bit out of our reach. We, we know, but we still sign up to the contract. We, we know, right? Um, behavioral science is, is a fascinating topic. It is. It is. How do we get better at it, I think, is the question. Well, um, it all starts to it all starts with you, right? When it comes to behavior, it, it boils down to actually doing it. Uh, you could probably know all the different concepts and um, and you know and, and try to understand everything, but I think in, in the last episode we were talking about how you know knowledge is not just is is not half the battle. You know, knowing is not enough. You got to be able to do it, and by doing it, don't tell yourself I'll I will do it. No, that's that's not something that. Uh, you will want to do if you want to change your behavior. You just do it, and it's it sounds yeah. I mean, as we talk about yeah, yeah, it sounds it, it does, but it actually is that easy, Chong. You just have to be able to do it. You know, if your friends and maybe yeah, one one tip I can I, I can probably give you is that no is a complete sentence, and one example like let's say for example okay. Uh, your friends call you out on a Saturday night. It's, it's the third week of the month, right? And and you want to be able to wind down. And you know your friends will say, "Hey, come on, come on, Alma." You know, just say no. You know you can't afford it, and just say no. You don't have to give them a reason. You say, "Oh no, I can't do this," and then you're gonna be put yourself in a position, and then they're gonna try to persuade you to do it. Just say no. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, delayed gratification is a very difficult concept to understand, especially if you've come from a position where you've had no money in the past and suddenly you're, you're earning a salary and you're free of the, of, the, you know, of the clutches of your parents, for example, and you're living in the city, right? Um, you know, if you moved out for the first time in, I don't know, 20 years, okay? Um, but I want to go back to that point you made earlier, Mo, about how people always think that they can earn more. So the guy who's paid 3000 will say, I wish I earned 6000 The guy that is earning 6000 is is thinking, I wish I was earning twelve. And then in so doing, he, he or she always postpones the necessity to save or better yet to invest because today's saving makes no sense whatsoever. He or she postpones the need to invest or even to just to give back by way of some, some charitable um, foundation. Now is the best time, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I think, um, yeah, like what you mentioned, you know, is uh, this concept of hedonic adaptation, right? So, oh, yeah, I'm just going to stick to it. I, I, I will start doing it when I get more money. Um, but now is probably the best time. If you, if, you haven't, if you haven't opened up a savings account, open it up now. It is, yeah. It's a testament to yourself, right, actually doing it. Because, like, you know, like, we know, you know what to do. You know that to that gratification, like, you, like, Tron, you said that it's difficult to understand. I think it's actually quite easy to understand, right? But it's just... You know, doing it. Uh, <laughs> I know it's probably come up a lot of times since already, but I think again, like it's a testament to yourself, right? If you can prove to yourself that you can do it, then then you're truly knowledgeable, then you're truly wise. I think part of the problem is that okay, let's just say for the for the time being, sa saving is ridiculous. Saving is not a proposition because interest rates are so low. You've got no choice but to put your money to work, okay? And putting your money to work means investing, for for want of a better word investing to get the best possible return at the best possible risk profile for you in, in where you are in your situation, okay? So, um, the most mature financial assets are things like um, your time deposits. I won't even call that investing, okay? Let's just say the share market, for example, right? The share market is by and large a mystery for a lot of people, even, well, especially for, for young people, right? And uh, Bitcoin, yeah, okay, Bitcoin is easier because you just sign up to an app. And then you just put in money from your bank account, but but then but then therein lies the dangers as well because you don't know enough. And this goes back again to what we were discussing a couple of weeks ago, about doing the research. So if you don't put in the hard yards, you don't put in the research, you just sign up to the app. 
that might put you off because you might lose your, your pants in the process, if, especially if you buy Bitcoin at $61,000 an ounce today. I mean, similarly to getting a witch, uh, if you're going to be investing, um, if, if your first uh, goal is to earn, uh, then you know, you, you're, you're probably enslaved to how, how, what the price of Bitcoin is going to be tomorrow. But if you're in it to learn, you're probably going to be learning you know, the whole blockchain space, how these things work, why, why, are we, why are people so interested in it, and you get to get exposed to a lot of other different uh, ecosystems and a lot of different other tokens then you know it broadens your uh, broadens your knowledge base at the very least it also uh, opens up some other avenues you know bitcoin might not be the only thing that you could probably look into there's thousands of different coins that you could probably start doing your own research on so it goes back to whether you know you're doing it to earn or you, whether you're doing it to learn and i think fundamentally at a very young age or at the very least when you're in your 20s um, similarly i've been in this position as well is the fact that um, I, 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 I don't go into something uh, so that I can, you know, I, I can be a millionaire the next day. I don't buy Bitcoin at $3,000 and hope for it to go $3 million the next day. But instead, um, I'm investing my time, I'm investing um, my, a bit of my money to be able to learn about it, to be able to understand it, so I can get better at it. And then the better I am, then the, the, the better risk management I can probably uh, undertake and be able to say, okay, you know what? Maybe now is not so. Uh, now is not the best time because Bitcoin's dominance is going down. Yeah. What do you guys? What financial goals do you have, both of you? I won't put it to you because you're you know shy of thirty, right? And if you think about investing as a long term horizon thing, the, the the more time you have to invest, the more money you got to make, and, and the more time you got to, to put your money to work. What are your financial goals, both of you? Well, for me, at this point in time, I mean, I mentioned, you know, a couple episodes ago that uh, my father had passed for you, maybe only about four years ago, right? So I have, I sort of like a thrust into wealth management at like 25, uh, basically not just in care of myself, but in care of my family, right? And that's a big responsibility. And, and you know, it was that point in time where I thought, okay, I really need to start sorting all this out. So. In terms of wealth creation, it's probably not my immediate goal anymore. I think at the moment, what I'm looking for is, is passive income or something whereby I am able to. So in fact, right now, I, I'm actually saving up to, to buy my, my own first car, use my own, first, my own money. So I guess for me, splitting what I have in terms of what I've inherited and what I'm doing for myself, I still need to prove to myself that I'm capable of achieving this goal, right? So for me right now, it is buying my first car, even though I do already have a car that, you know, was given to me by my mother, but this, I, I, but you know, that's obviously that's getting older. So the next purchase I make is for myself and it's with my own effort and my own money. Um, for me, I just need to prove that to myself that I can, you know, my father's provided me with that a car and much more, right? Before he passed away. So I, I need to prove to myself that if I can be half the man that he was, then I know I'm, 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 good, I'm, I'm doing good enough, right? <laughs> well. Well, I'm I'm I, I'm in a different path uh, than than Adam. Um, for me, it's um, I mean we have a lot of financial goals, right? I mean everyone can have a paint a picture whether it be whether it's a picket fence or it's a Rolls Royce. Uh, but personally, for me, is that I don't want to be enslaved by the paycheck, um, you know, and and I don't want to be I don't want to get a jo- I don't want to get a job uh, for the sole reason the fact that um, I think my time and my my energy is better off. Uh, helping other people really understanding the concept of it. So my personal goal at this point in time is to be able to get um, to get my pe- my investments to pay for my lifestyle. Uh, we are here offer we don't pay ourselves that much either. We're we're a finance uh, mobile app that helps people make money. It's, it sounds like the UN, right? We're going to be making uh, uh, millions of dollars every week. But the idea of the fact that you know my investments and my uh, the dividend payouts or even in fact. Uh, the, the cryptocurrencies that I that I play with round actually pays for my lifestyle. If I get a weekly payout by one of my coins that I'm putting into, that's great. If I'm making about you know a thousand dollars a week um, from from mining or from staking these different coins, then that's something that could actually support my lifestyle, and I don't have to worry about the paycheck that comes in every every month. So really, it's about building like what Adam mentioned. It's about building these different passive incomes, different revenue models. 
I do want a picket fence at the end of the day, you know. I, I do want to be able to uh, build a family of my own as well. But that takes a lot of money. And for me to be able to do this, what I'm doing right now is building these vehicles that can churn out uh, weekly or even in fact monthly payouts to me while still keeping my capital intact. The, the only number I heard was 1,000 ringgit or $1,000 per week by mining coins. You're actually mining coins, mate? And you're getting a thousand dollars a week. That, that's that's all right, man. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, uh, there's a lot of things that goes on uh, behind it. Uh, we've been in. I mean, we we dabbled in the uh, cryptocurrency for quite some time now, and you know, like like Bitcoin is probably not the best to buy at this point in time because it doesn't really give you anything. Uh, it's a store of value, um, but there are other projects that are actually giving you a lot better returns in terms of your investment. Uh, I mean, fun fact. Yeah, fun fact, actually, me and Mo did try to start up our renewable climate fund about four years ago. I mean, we've dabbled in the space for a little while now. And so we, like Mo said earlier, we understand the space. Um, and that's very important because a lot like, you know, are you in it to learn or are you in it to earn it? Again, right? So a lot of people are in it for the quick buck. They're like, oh my God, Bitcoin's going up, it's going to be They don't know, they don't have no, any idea about the blockchain. They have no idea about how Bitcoin even works. They just want to get rich quick. Uh, so when when we say that you know apparently you know that perhaps we are you know using this to fund our, our own lifestyle and whatnot, just understand that it took us time to get here, to really understand it and then really read the rewards in a way that doesn't put you at much risk. Yeah, probably DeFi is another topic that we could talk about, Chuang. Uh, so <laughs> what is DeFi? Um, well, it's short for decentralized finance. Um, the idea of how a lot of these blockchain technologies are trying to Break down a conventional, uh, you know, conventional finance and actually make it decentralized. Um, taking the concept of how these banks are making money, you know, you're providing money here. Banks normally that's what banks do, right? Uh, they lend money here for them, then they reconsolidate and then they earn a certain percentage and all these different things. But with the power of blockchain and the power, you know, with the introduction of cryptocurrencies, this could actually be decentralized and everyone in the society could start benefiting from it. You don't have to be a bank to be able to provide. Uh, to get a return on your investment if you provide these so-called liquidity and all these other stuff or other vehicles. You could be staking your coins and getting a 15% return that's better than putting it into any other bank. Um, so that's that's something that, you know, um, we, we, we will probably, with Hey Alfred, we will try to start introducing different concepts. But the, the whole space right now is still very technical, it's still very too gargantuic for people to really understand. And we want to be able to take it in bite sizes so that we don't shock everyone. Like, oh, I can be earning 900% a year? Are you serious? And it sounds like a scam. I, I, gotta, I, gotta, I, I gotta come and talk to you about this coin staking thing and this 900% a year uh, yield thing. But you would have seen um, my rant on, on the channel about how banks, you know, I mean, they might be rendered extinct by you guys in, within 10 years because they're just so slow and they're so inefficient and so expensive. <laughs> yeah, they're going to come after me now. Um, you know what I find would be really, really powerful, right? Is that if you built up these massive, they don't even have to be massive. They have to be reliable yielders of income and wealth generation over the long term. But at the same time, one adopts a persona where you are quite happy being a simple person. And I think, as you mentioned earlier offline, Mo, th that word is actually called um, bashuko, right? Um, sure. Yeah, and that's a big thing. That's a big thing. Um, how do we get there? How does the young person get there? Don't talk about me because I'm a different era, right? How does one get there? Well, I think I, I think that concept is uh, it's it's a hit or miss. Um, it's, it's it's not for everyone, you know. Um, it's it, it really isn't. And the simple minimalist lifestyle is not for everyone. Um, but it, at the end of the day, is what makes you happy. There's nothing wrong with having a Rolls Royce if that makes you happy, but you better jolly well look at it every single day and tell yourself that, hey, this fifty five hundred thousand dollar car is making me happy, right? Uh, oh, uh, three million. <laughs> I don't know. I drive a Proton, so, <laughs> so you know, it's it, it really is about what actually makes you happy, and 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 if you find if you find the fact that okay, whatever I have now. Uh, is actually giving me happy, happy in a sense where I have a lot more time. I don't have to be working um, nine to nine to ten p.m. at night, but I have a lot more time with my family, and that's what's really important. And really prioritize what are exactly are the things that actually make you happy. So, 
it's really understanding you know the fundamentals of uh, what is it that you really want in life if 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 it's the car then yeah if it's going to make you happy until you if you pass on then sure why not right uh, but it's really understanding um, what is it that you want in life at the end of the day yeah just for those who don't know bashuka bashuka is actually um, the the ability to be grateful for whatever you have uh, however little or however much you you might have mm. and i mean let's not forget a lot of people with with 10 million bucks are really unhappy because they want to be worth 100 million bucks and the 100 million buck guy wants to be worth a mm. billion buck and he could be really unhappy um you know <laughs> so yeah. it's 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 a question one has one has to ask oneself are, are you are you that kind of person or are you just going to be those guys that are con- constantly um grabbing for more searching for more not happy until you're i don't know not never not ever happy yeah i mean there's nothing wrong with always wanting more but are you really happy doing it right again it it, it works both ways lah i think <laughs> okay okay so let's let's try and be a little bit constructive and just um as we always do try and end the session with um three tips okay how to be how to be better at being grateful okay and if it's the word and if it's bushuko that we are going to go with then how do we become more grateful how do we become more bushuko maybe three things f- from you and from you adam mo um well i mean this might sound uh you know quite um quite pessimistic or quite negative for the fact that but just look around you know uh just just stop and look around there are, there are people in other countries that don't have access to clean water here you just click on your koe and dispenses a uh, you know clean water and you really have that um some people don't even have shoes to put on and you look down at your sh- closet your shoe cabinet and you say wow i've got 20 pairs of shoes but only one pair of feet um you know and i'm grateful for that um so that's probably one tip uh, it might sound there's this concept called you know shorten fighter you look at other people's misery joy from other people's misery right but it's not the case when it comes to being bashukur or the effect um it it puts you in perspective yeah it puts you in a yardstick whereby you you look at another person's situation and say hey i'm very grateful for what i have today and that's probably just uh, one of the one of the tips that i could probably think about i mean i like, calling on from that as well it's like when you are looking around comparing yourself stop comparing yourself to people who are much you know further up than you uh like you know bishuko is a concept of looking down sorry lah i don't mean to say looking down right but looking at those less fortunate than you right and then you say okay look i'm better off in the position that i'm in i don't need to be up there but i know i'm doing better than this guy he is killing to be in my position right now um so yeah it's it's matter of perception right? it's 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 you know you the next guy up there might look happy but he might not be anywhere near as happy as you are where you are right now yeah um, yeah it, it's like how it's like but when how you much, actually do look hard. down there you know you don't go and 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 laugh uh, but it, it tends to bring about a mm. uh, more giving uh, way yeah. and say okay how can i help because yeah. i've really got plenty you know yeah don't be envious yeah. people about you It's so hard though, isn't it? It is so hard, yeah. right? especially when you're in a yeah. peer circle. Um, okay, word of um, a piece of advice, a, a, a thought to take us uh, into the next seven days before our next session. Um, what, what, how, what would you suggest? Um, I mean, yeah, like what we mentioned earlier, you know, um, to to look at others and to look around uh, and see. and that being a yardstick to where your life is at this point in time um don't look at uh, the brand new flashy car that your neighbors get and you might fall into keeping up with the joneses right the idea of keeping up with the joneses but in fact you know look around and say hey how can i be able to give back well, i'm in a position where i've got clean water i've got uh, ample food i've got 20 pairs of shoes one pair of feet um and how can i help other people to at the very least achieve five pairs of shoes or at the very least one you know yeah. so that's giving giving back uh with whatever that you currently have because giving doesn't start from when you get it you know you get when you give more so just do it yeah and start giving fantastic fantastic adam Uh, I had one on the top of my head just now. Oh yeah, just uh, to recap again what we said earlier. Earn, you need to earn or learn, right? You're not going to get rich quick. 
stop thinking you're going to get rich quick. It's a process. Uh, and when you go into it, actually take the time like, to understand it. Don't just like also you know, read over it once and say, oh, I understand that. No, it takes time right, to, to, to build or you know, wealth creation, passive income, whatever your goals might be. Yeah. It, it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be a goal if it was easy. Yeah, absolutely. It's like how, how my dad used to tell me, um, you know, for, for the boy who, who complains about how tattered his shoes are, then he comes across a beggar on the street with, with no legs. Then he realizes he's actually really, really lucky to be where he is with his tattered pair of shoes. Okay, gentlemen, mm-hmm. uh, that, that's a wrap for this week. Uh, good luck. I hope to see you in person and record our next yes. session in, in, in physical proximity next time. <laughs> what yeah, thanks for that. Take care. Yeah. Take thanks, care. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Sean. All right, man. Take care. Cheers.